it does not run well on anything but the newest gen cell phones and tablets yeah. which makes me wonder how popular it actually will be because you're yeah, not tapping that's... into that like indian mobile gaming market they don't have the $1,200 iPhones, I would imagine. Like, That's... mobile games are popular because they're so accessible. Like, Candy Crush doesn't require, and like, a 3090 yeah. in your cell phone. So, Activision devs do not play their own game. 3,000 devs can't figure out how to add a reconnect feature to a AAA title, I guess. I don't know. Because Infinity Ward doesn't tell their consumers anything. Maybe that'll take some of the sweats away from uh, Shoot House. You can cope about that, for sure. Thanks for tweeting, at least. Thanks for doing more than Infinity Ward has done. They just keep tweeting about the f***ing the soccer bundles in the store. Things that are bad. We've, oh. got, we've got a couple words. Why don't you kick it off, Tanner? <laughs> we gotta, this is going to be a, a longer section than the first part you guys heard. Change it, obviously, of course. We are live, boys and girls. Welcome to the Drop Shot Call of Duty Podcast episode... Number 411. My name is Casey, also known as Razanon. Today, I'm joined by Tanner for this installment of Warzone and Call of Duty news really? and stuff. Really? And not. I guess we're a Warzone mobile podcast now because that's the only thing that Activision cares about. It's that seems. what we're thinking? Yeah. That's, yeah, Maybe. that's what we're thinking. That's what it's looking like to me, man. That's what it's looking sure. like to me. So, anyways, welcome to the show. Uh, today, we have a couple things to talk about. Most of the hubbub in the Call of Duty universe this week has been around Warzone Mobile, which is Wars. frankly astounding to me. Uh, I, I'm very surprised that you know, like Warzone ranked resurgence streamers are pretending to care about Warzone Mobile. I don't really understand it. Um, I guess it's because of the new maps or the, well, the returning maps that you can't play except unless you play mobile. Yeah. But um, right. <clears throat> we'll get more into that as we go through this episode. But there are a couple other little things to talk about as well with the game that we actually play, which is not uh, Warzone Mobile. And by the way, if you're a Warzone Mobile main, do me a favor, unsubscribe from this podcast. Yeah. Listen, L, okay? L-U, don't do that. Play it once in a while, maybe. We'll get into it. But before that, as I said, we do have a couple of changes to the, the main video game to talk about, not many. Uh, we're still waiting for season three, basically, and it's going to be a bit slow until that happens, which I don't believe is happening until next month. Still Two think weeks. we got, yeah, a couple of weeks. 12 days. Yeah. So uh, in the meantime, we have some things, as I said, to discuss. And before that, a couple announcements. First and foremost, welcome to our new patron, singular cringe. That'll change, I believe. Data Racks! Our new Platinum Patron. I kind of like that name, by the way. I'm a fan of that. Data uh, Racks. Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay. It's a good Nothing one. Nothing to add there. It's, it's a name. It's fine. It's a, it's a video game gamer handle. It's a good one. It's I'll a gamer it. handle. Yeah. I do like the letter X in video game names. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, because you don't see that Monikers, in real life very them. often. No, yeah, you don't. Not at all. It's interesting, yeah. There's like Xavier, which isn't which great, is kind of yeah. cheating because you put it at the front, so then you literally just say the letter. It's not like the sound. Yeah, it's not like the. X. Yeah, not the same. Did you X. know? Did you speaking of the letter X? By the way, did you know that um, British people say sixth differently than Americans do? How do they say it? Sixth. No, they don't. Are you? I swear serious? to God. I swear to God. And technically, they're yeah. actually more correct. That's how you would say that word. Because the the X sound is like data racks. Sixth. It's like you just make the X sound, but we like say it like sixth. We're adding extra. Sixth. 
sick. Isn't yeah. it weird? I don't know uh, where I learned yeah. that or no. I don't know if I noticed it myself or someone pointed it out to me, but it was a while ago, and I was like, "Whoa, that's crazy." That is, I yeah. Isn't wow, it I don't weird like that at all? I hate yeah. it actually. Yeah. Kind of reminds me of like um, you know, did you see Inglorious Bastards? Uh yeah, when I was like ten, yeah. There's like so don't scene, ask me if I remember anything. Yeah, that's that. fine. But the, you'll probably remember this scene because it gets talked about a lot where the guy is a spy or something and he asks for three drinks, but he uses his thumb or he doesn't use his thumb. He uses like the three fingers, one of the two, but like Germans signal for three using their thumb. So they hold up two fingers and a thumb, whereas I guess everyone else holds up like three fingers, no thumb. Okay. So he did that at a bar and then some guy with him was like, oh, wait, you're a yeah. spy. If you were a German, like you're said? pretending wait, to be. You're a spy, man. Yeah, he said, it, he said that it. was that was his line that he was given by Quentin Tarantino. That's the dialogue yeah. Tarantino writes. Yeah. So anyway, um, kind of reminds me of that, though. Like if you're a, a spy, if you're an American spy pretending to be British, you'd have to know that little trick. Mm -hmm. You'd get exposed. Yeah. Yeah, I'm sure they'd know it. Yeah. Yeah, probably. So anyway, welcome, Datorax. Uh, thank you very much, buddy. Our new Platinum <laughs> patron. You're an absolute king. Now, speaking of the Patreon, by the we got no donations and we got no other patrons. L, cool. L audience, L listeners, get us more patrons next time. But I have faith we will for this reason. As a reminder, we've done a number of Patreon episodes already this month. I believe we've talked about pretty much all of them. Um, we did do our behind the scenes as our latest one for our Damascus chads. That one was interesting uh, because Tanner embarked on a new journey in life that That's we what have. They're saying, yeah, yeah, yeah. His kid was finally born, and we talked about that more in the behind the scenes episodes. If you want to hear all about that, you can listen to that now if you are or become a Damascus patron. Um, but in addition to that, we had done for all of our patrons, Golden Up, the Warzone Brainstorm, I believe, was our last gold episode. And we've already talked about that, but we focused a lot on the weapons and weapon meta, which has not changed at all since we recorded it and which will not change for another couple weeks. So, and even when it does, I think a lot of that is still going to be relevant when season three comes out. So you guys can go listen to that, um, but we've already talked about that. What I'm excited to announce, however, is on Patreon, we've decided this is going to be a Patreon exclusive episode for all of our patrons. So only five bucks a month or five bucks one time to listen to it if you want. We're finally going to do it. We've decided... We've committed. We are going to do the preeminent, decisive controller versus keyboard and mouse in Warzone and multiplayer to some extent episode. We're finally going to do it. I have been teasing this topic for literally two years, maybe. Um, when I first kind of experimented using a controller back in MW2, uh, but we never actually got around to doing it, basically because I had not played enough controller in Call of Duty. So now, however, that is not the case. Uh, for the entirety of season two, I have been playing on a controller, literally the entire season. So I've played like a lot of hours on controller now in multiplayer and in Warzone, and I am by no means an expert on controller. Um, I'm still better on keyboard and mouse. Uh, however, I've played enough on controller now to at least be able to do this episode, and I'm really excited to do it because we have often whinged complained about aim assist on this program as keyboard and mouse players. Um, and we would always be told like, Oh, why don't you just switch? If it's that overpowered. So I said, bet. So I did. Um, but 
It's not as simple as that. And I think there's a lot to say on this topic. And we are going to do that on Patreon and we're going to record that episode tomorrow. So that should be going live on the 23rd for all of our patrons. So if you want to listen to that, then patreon.com slash the drop shot. I think it's going to be really good and really interesting. And also, I think you guys are going to be surprised because it is not going to be just us crying about aim assist the whole episode. Um, I am... I have been surprised by a lot of things uh, having used a controller for this entire season. I've been... Some things I have not surprised me, to be clear, um, but a lot of things have. And when you want to ask, like, what's the best input method, I actually think it's a more complicated answer than we maybe have originally said, but... There are a bunch of caveats and there are a lot of like interesting details to get into. And now that I have ample experience with both, I think we are equipped to do that episode and I'm very excited about it. So, uh, patreon.com slash the drop shot. We haven't recorded it yet, but I'm really excited to do it. And I don't think if you are on controller or if you roll your eyes at aim assist discussion, I don't think you're going to hate the episode. I think you'll actually find it very interesting. Because I'm, you know, as you guys might not believe me, but we do try to be very fair uh, about everything, uh, including this topic. And now that I've played a bunch on controller, I have a lot to say that maybe you haven't heard me say before. So that'll be coming out as well this month. And then you'd get all the other goodies too: ad free episodes, early goodies. access, etc. So are you excited, man? Yeah, I mean, it, it won't be so much like I don't think K Bam versus Aim Assist. It'll probably just be more you talking about kind of, you know, your experience of things. But it's not going to be like, I don't know, we're not going to be like arguing about them. Cause I also didn't use controller and I'm not going to. And I've said that 150 times. So if anyone's going to say that again, don't bother. I'm not going to try it. I don't care that much. Uh, but it'll be interesting because I played with Raz the whole time he's been using it. So I can kind of tell things, too, of what he's maybe better at, what he's not as good at. So it'll be interesting. Yeah. 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 I think it'll be good. Yeah. The fa the fact that Tanner has not played on Roller, I don't think matters that much um, because at least one of us has. And then, you know, and yeah, Tanner's right. Like, it's not going to be the definitive. It's, you know, it's not going to be the definitive like K-Ban versus Controller episode. Because I'm just one guy. It's just one guy's opinion. Just some but, guy, yeah. But just also, you know, guy. I'm gonna I'm gonna take into account the data, like other people's experience having switched or who the best players are, etc. So we'll get into all that. But I'm very excited for that um, episode. Yeah. Uh, so is this what we're doing? I think so. Yeah, I think we gotta. Okay. Yeah. So uh, also. I guess we're doing our Damascus hangout tomorrow, Friday the 22nd at 6.30 p.m. Pacific time. Sometime around there, yeah. Sometime around 6.30. Oh, wait, yeah, 6.30. What time is that for me? Ooh, that's okay. All right. We could do that. You get off work yeah. at what, 5? No, 6. That's why it's 6.30. Oh, no. What a disaster. And, and then I'm next not week doing it's it the at same. 7. Uh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, I see. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So we are probably doing the hangout tomorrow, the 22nd, if you're here live. Uh, it, so hopefully you're listening live or early access. If you wanted to come, I know there's a little bit of a surprise announcement, but if you've been, if you're a Damascus patron, you've listened to behind the scenes and you know why that is again, Tanner's newborn child. Patreon.com slash the drop shot. We were talking Damascus about it in uh, Discord details. last night too, and there were a bunch of people that were like, yeah, I could do like tomorrow. That's fine. So there yeah. are at least like four or five people that said that. Once that that once that is absolutely settled, we will put it in the announcements channel and we will at all of our Damascus patrons. If you want to attend the hangout, or if you want to get certainty that it will in fact be tomorrow, join the Discord, link your Patreon and Discord accounts, takes 10 seconds. And there's a guide in the Discord on how to do that. New patron onboarding. Very easy. Uh, and you'll have to join the Discord anyway and link your accounts to participate in the Hangout. So uh, do that. And then, yeah, the Hangout's probably tomorrow. Um, so, yeah, that'll be fun. Not sure what we're going to do. 
Uh, we will figure it out. And if you're listening for the jingle, here it is. I don't think you mentioned what we're doing Saturday, did you? Oh no, dang I think it. You skipped it. Dang it. I think we put it Bro in did the... a mishap. Yeah, yeah, there was a little bit of a mishap for sure, yeah. It's I in the uh, It's in the announcements, yeah. Okay, yeah, sketchy. Yeah. Doesn't matter people don't like us. That's of course true, yeah. Um, okay. All right. Yeah, another quick announcement by the way, on Saturday, we will in fact be de- doing the tier list part 2. I know oh, wow. that uh, that was likely. Uh, now it's certain. Nothing else happened this week to talk about, unless we were gonna like do a Warzone Mobile first impressions, which will never <laughs> be happening, which will not and never be happening. Yeah. Again, hey, we will play it and we will do an episode on it if somebody sends both of us brand new iPads and controllers. Otherwise, we and won't scuffs, do it and don't correct, bother yeah. asking. Yes. And make Thank sure you, you make sure you DM us for our scuff de- uh, specifications because yeah. you'd have to also, of course, get us the right color, stick height, um, yeah. grip tape yeah. style, um, yeah. engraving, obviously. Yeah. Uh, so, yeah, make That's sure you do great, that yeah. if you want that. Yeah. And and they'd have to you'd have to ship them by uh, portal because we would need them before Saturday by tomorrow. So uh, mm. good luck. Yeah, so on Saturday instead, what we're going to do is, yeah, tier list part two. We're going to finish up the absolute tier list of the big maps for Warzone. We have heard your feedback, by the way. I don't, Tanner may not have seen as much as I have, but on Patreon, on YouTube, and in Discord, we have had like at least five people each in each area, probably more, especially on YouTube, saying, I love the tier list. Do more of oh, them yeah. now. People love them. Yeah. People really liked the episode and they really want more tier lists. So we will do that. Uh, starting with this Saturday, we'll finish up the tier list. So we're going to rank all the POIs for Almazra and Urzikstan. And I'm excited for that as well. We're going to do that Saturday. So episode four, 12. And I'm excited for that one in particular because... Those POIs are way more fresh in our mind. Um, yeah. Than like Verdansk 84. Like how, like, okay, I don't remember how Prom West changed. So like we didn't have much to say, but for this episode on Saturday, we will have a lot. To, we will have enough to say. We will at least remember in detail every single POI. I think that'll make for a fun episode as well. And then in the future... I will make more tier lists for other things. Uh, I heard some requests for Warzone meta weapons. That could be good. Yeah. I heard a number for Resurgence map POIs. Someone was effusively saying how good of an idea that is. So we could do that as well. I like both of those ideas. So I need to get started on those tier lists and then we will do them Maybe next Saturday, because we still won't have season three by next Saturday. Yeah. So why don't you guys let us know? What do you want to see more on the 30th? It'll be the gun one. We're not going to do maps and then maps again. It would be the gun one for okay. sure. In fact, okay. that's already that's what you already started working at working on. I guess you don't remember that. You've been working on that for a few days. Oh, that's so. correct. Yeah, I have been. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. So shout out you to me. Keep and working thank you keep working on that, Raz. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, I need to keep working on that. So anyway, yeah, that's going to be Saturday. Uh, That'll be fun. So now let's get into today's episode. Uh, Episode, mini episode. Today's, what's a, what's a short episode? Vignette? I don't know. Anyway, whatever. Uh, We got some patch notes. Not too much to go over here, but it is something from this week. This was two days ago. And... Let's talk about it. So, a couple pretty substantive changes, actually. The Ram 9, which was, which is still an SMG, one of the meta SMGs for sure, it changed with Season 2 Reloaded 
by getting extra damage range and bullet velocity on three of the barrels, one of which is pretty much in every single person's war zone loadout uh, or like attachment setup. So basically, the Ram 9 effectively got just a base bullet velocity and um, damage range increase. That was like 20%. It was pretty substantial for barrels, three of the barrels, one of which pretty much everyone's using. So it got a big buff, uh, but they changed it again two days ago. The near mid damage was decreased to 24 from 27. So near mid, we finally know what this means, means second damage range. So the Ram 9's first damage range is still longer than it was before Season 2 Reloaded, but the damage you'll be doing at that second damage range is reduced by 3. Um, I think that's... Well, and here's what else changed. Mid-damage decreased to 22 down from 24. So that's like your third damage range. That doesn't matter too much, I don't think. Um... What this does matter for is, I remember recently, I don't know if I said this on Patreon, I think I said this on a Patreon episode, but I said with the increased to the damage range and bullet velocity of those three barrels, the Ram 9 actually might be a more attractive sniper support option on big map than the AMR 9, because now you get more damage range out of the Ram 9 and less handling penalties. Um, fewer handling penalties, rather. Less severe ones. Um, I think that's probably out now. So, I don't think many people were using the Ram 9 this way. But if you were, I think it's time to go back to the AMR 9 again. Uh, so, hope you had fun for a week. Um, in terms of how most people are using a Ram 9 as, like, a basic SMG, I don't think this is too big of a deal. Because your second damage range with a kitted Ram 9, probably starts at like, I don't know, 18 meters? Yeah, I think, something like that. So, you you doing less damage than you used to from 18 meters and beyond is something, but I don't think it like ruins the gun necessarily. I think this is still a perfectly viable SMG, and I still think you're going to be fighting a lot of people inside your first damage range still, especially again with the in 20% range increase it got with season two reloaded. So I don't think this gun is chalked or anything, but it is definitely nerfed. Yeah. Um. Yeah. I mean the Ram two, it's so bouncy. It's hard to use at range anyways. That's so a great like, point also. Yeah. So like past 18 meters, the gun was kind of difficult to use, so it's definitely a lot worse there. But like most people were just using it for a very like close range build, you know, because it did kill very fast up there. Um, yeah, I was trying to look at the chart real quick, see if there's any interesting data on it. Uh, no, not really. Oh, it did get quite a bit worse. Yeah, wow. It went from at its damage drop off. Wait, so it dropped off... Well, so the second damage range actually starts at... With no attachments, it starts at about 10 meters. So at oh, 10 meters... Really? So at 10 meters, that oh, thing wow. went from 850 millisecond time to kill to like 910. So it's a lot worse. Yeah, the gun's quite a bit worse. That actually is a lot worse. I thought its base first damage range was farther. No, I guess not. I also thought it was better. Yeah. So with I'm attachments, your second one. damage no, range it. probably starts at 14 meters. If you're if you're using like a suppressor, which most people actually aren't, so maybe like 13 and a half, that is a pretty big deal then. Yeah. That's a pretty big deal. So when you take into account the Ram 9 sprint of fire time also, uh, I don't see a reason to use it anymore, to be honest. And yeah, so I mean, bouncy. it is still good up close, but yeah, mm -hmm. I don't... So it went from... Yeah, so at 10 meters with no attachments, it went from... Well, like 6... This is with chest only, so it's hard to say. Yeah, it's like 70 milliseconds slower, actually, around there. At what range? 
starting first, at like 10 meters. Oh, so, so second, second damage range. Sort of second damage range. damage range. Yeah. 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 I don't know. I don't have much to say. I never liked the gun anyways. I always thought it felt awful. So wait, it um, only changed by 70 milliseconds? And yeah. It's second it's damage 70, range? Said. Yeah, yeah. 70. Oh, that's not too bad then. That's yeah. not too bad. Yeah. I don't know. Um, yeah. Whatever. Test it out. It doesn't sound like it's totally gutted, but I would need to look more into it. Um, yeah. The main thing is it still has a longer first damage range than it used to, and uh, that didn't change at all. So another thing was nerfed, the HRM-9. This has been, as we have said many times, the best, just most well-rounded SMG in the game right now by a lot, in my opinion. It's not necessarily the best at anything, but it's extremely good at everything for an SMG. Uh, and its max damage range was decreased from 12.95 to 11.3 meters. Super not a big deal, and this gun is basically identical to how it used to be. This is such a small yeah. change that I wonder why it even happened at all. Um... Like, this is something you'll never actually like notice in game. Yeah, never. Once, so doesn't the, really matter. Yeah, super doesn't matter. So that gun is still very, very good. Um, so I mean, they obviously good. think the Ram Nine is performing a lot better though, because they nerfed it a lot harder. So yeah, it's too. odd. It's odd. Um, Which I'm fine with. Again, I love the HRM. I'll keep using it. Yeah, I would say if you've been maining the Ram Nine, keep using it, and if you feel like you're getting in a lot of gunfights in your second damage range, probably stop using it. At that point, I think HRM is probably better. Not because it's better in the second damage range, but because it's better at everything closer than that. So you'd probably be getting more benefit out of using it. But yeah, yeah. Not, a, not a huge change to the HRM at all. So uh, next, the Gulag. Okay. Night Vision Gulag has been disabled. So this is supposedly some event that can happen to you. You can get a Gulag with Night Vision on. This was added, I believe, at the launch of Season 2. Yeah, I, I have so. literally not a single time gotten a Night Vision Gulag. I've gotten it twice for sure, maybe three times. It is very rare, though, and I think they said that. It's like a... I want to say they gave a percentage and it was like a 3% chance of it happening or something. It was very low though. But yeah, it's super low. So I've never gotten it and I never will. It turns out because they disabled it. I don't really care. I, I think it's like a cute idea, but it's not, this isn't a big deal at all. However, the next thing is a big deal. Laser attachments have been removed and replaced <laughs> in Gulag loadouts about wow time man yeah about time yeah that's what god bless saying. god bless that has been I don't incredibly know why it took that long, but yeah and annoying i don't know why either they did do a blurb so let's read it okay the they're blurb. talking about the night vision gulag okay got it so they don't say anything about the lasers they don't apologize Read it. profusely. Read it. Why? Because they do. That's what it's about. Read it. Okay. Read past the fifth word, man. I saw Night Vision Gulag and I just tapped out. The introduction of the Night Vision Gulag variant provided a fun twist to the 1v1 it experience. Didn't, but yeah. That's, yeah Thanks. It, it didn't. It didn't, and I literally didn't get it once. That said, in order to accommodate it, we had to add lasers to weapons which subsequently affected the loadouts of every other Gulag variant. Oh! So that was the whole thing, because when you're in night vision and you go canted, that's the way to aim. But from, my, from a player perspective, it's like, why can't, when the Gulag night event happens, why can't the guns just have lasers, but mm -hmm. then outside of the night, they don't? Mm -hmm. But from their, from the dev side, that must be like weird to do or something i i don't i don't understand that at all seems to me like they could have just left the night vision gulag chance in left the lasers on those guns remove them from outside well of you but didn't whatever. keep it reading didn't. either buddy Oops. i read it all yesterday okay well I'm gonna, I'm gonna keep reading for our listeners so that said in order to accommodate the night vision gulag we had to add lasers to weapons which subsequently affected the loadouts of every other gulag variant 
We've since heard the feedback loud and clear, and we're no longer fond of these modifications, modifiers, okay. impacting the overall Gulag experience. You should have never been fond of them, but okay. Yeah. As yeah. such, we made the uh, decision to disable night vision encounters while we work on splitting Gulag loadouts up to better serve each play space variant. Should we decide to bring this particular experience back, it will be with a unique form of engagement in mind. Okay. So what that sounds like to me is they are working on what Tanner just recommended, which is the obvious thing they should have done from the outset, which is have different guns when it's a night vision gulag with different attachments than the normal gulag, duh. That doesn't seem hard. Um, yeah. And I don't know why they... I don't know why it didn't occur to them that ha having these lasers would be a terrible idea. Um, yeah, I, I again, so. I don't know how people supposedly play test this and think like the lasers didn't just ruin the entire gulag experience, but you know, here they are. Yeah. To be fair, though, as dumb as they are for having done this, I appreciate that they explain why there were lasers in the gulag for so long. Explained why they're dumb. Yeah. I, this is all I, like we've said, this is what we wanted. Now I know why they had lasers for so long and it was so bad. At least it was in service of something else they were trying to do. And they admit that, own up to it, and then say, hey, we're done now. Sorry. Yeah. But this is why it happened. That goes a long way. So W Raven for talking w about Raven. it. L Raven for not thinking of that before you even tested it, let alone keeping it in after you tested it. Well, you don't test it. Yeah, it's side point. Yeah, it's funny because I never once had the thought like, oh, that's why there are lasers on. Yeah, guns that didn't occur to gulag. me either because you would just think they would be separate right. loadouts and guns and everything. But yeah, yeah. So yeah. that makes so much sense now that they've explained it. It's like, yeah. oh, duh. Okay. Yeah, Infinity Ward could never. Um, so anyway, and then in addition to that, we got some fun, uh, bug fixes. Uh, fix an issue on Fortune's Keep that allowed unmanned vehicles to remain attached to the research vessel and would eliminate players that come into contact with it. Oh no. Can you imagine how mad you'd be? Oh yeah. You get team wiped when you, your deployment fee is 5,000 SR. Because some jet ski that's unmanned is being dragged by the research vessel and it runs you over. War there, zone. Yeah. There's that's no vessel it. in ranked, but I get the idea. Yeah. 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 I'm like, what, 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 what would this even be for? I guess it's like literally just choppers or something. Like if somebody lands a chopper on it and then it's no longer manned. Maybe if you, you put like a jet it? ski like in front of the research vessel and it just like pushes it along and it if it hits you, you die. That's what I was it's thinking. It's just, I mean amazing to me they can figure out this bug exists and fix it within two weeks of the research vessel coming out but here there are just still so many minor bugs in the game like the armor plates still aren't dropping after 40 days yeah that's insane and they're aware of it and they've said they're aware of it and they've claimed to fix it two or three times and they haven't yeah that's what i'm always shocked by is the the type of bugs that get fixed compared to the ones that never get fixed interesting <laughs> Yeah, it is interesting because, yeah, I mean, you shouldn't be dying to unmanned jet skis, but also there are more pressing concerns to attend to, like plates. Yeah, that's a good, great point. But anyway, today's episode is brought to you by us and our Patreon, where we offer all of our members, all of our episodes, public and otherwise, early access and ad free, starting at just five bucks a month at the gold tier Patrons get three raw, uncensored Call of Duty bonus episodes every month, in addition to every bonus episode of the past, and a unique Discord role as well. Our first bonus episode this month was a Warzone kind of brainstorm. We talked a ton about the weapon meta, which is still completely relevant. Not much has changed with weapons. And the next episode we plan to do, we're gonna compare, we're finally gonna do it, controller to keyboard and mouse and it's not just going to be an aim assist whinge fest as you might think since i've been using controller for a long time now i have a lot to say on this topic and it's not as simple exactly as aim assist is overpowered i'm really excited to do that episode we're going to be doing it tomorrow 
and that'll probably be going live on Patreon on the 23rd, which you could listen to at any tier. If you want to go 10 bucks a month for Platinum, you'd get everything from the Gold tier and a Q&A episode where only you can ask the questions or hear the answers. We've done that for this month as well. And if you wanted to be a true supporter, Damascus at 20 bucks a month gets all of that, plus one behind the scenes episode every month, your own Discord role, of course, our Damascus only patron hangouts, and access to the coveted Discord lounge. If you hated hearing this ad, join the Patreon, patreon.com slash the drop shot. Ad free episodes, early access episodes, bonus episodes. What isn't to love? Let's get back to the show. Uh, speaking of other changes they made that they shouldn't have made before giving plates to players, uh, Raven tweeted this. For the next week, Mixed View BR is an LTM in Warzone that allows players to toggle between first and third person view. Got it. Uh, we played it this morning. Oh, really? Um, How was that? We were hoping it would be bot lobbies like preview. It wasn't really that body compared to preview mode. Um, Did you play in third and... person the whole time? No, I couldn't. The button doesn't <laughs> work. More. So <laughs> when you're loading, so like as you're hovering over it to click on it, it says like, oh, press J. Or no, it says hold J to swap to third person or down on D-pad to swap to third person. Okay. So I'm like, oh, okay, there we go. So, so we played one match, we couldn't figure it out. So then I read that. I'm like, oh, okay, let's try it again. So queued up, start dropping in. Cope does it on his D-pad. And he's like, oh, yeah, it works. This is cool. It's not. He lied. Um, so then I land and I'm like, it's not working. I'm just, I'm pressing J. I'm holding down on J. Not working. So I'm like, oh, you know what? I can just go into my settings. They have this fancy feature they added where I can search anything. So I type in third, T-H-I-R-D. There are six different it, right? settings. Yeah. Went through every single one. None of them are keybinds for changing perspectives. It's like it. field of view settings, aim assist settings, this and that setting. So then Cope's like, oh, did you try 3RD? I'm like, oh, so there's a 3RD and then also a third. Okay. He said, <laughs> yeah, try 3RD. So then I type in 3RD. It gives me four other settings. Oh, Go no. through every single one of those. Not a single one of those settings was anything related to the keybind. I'm like, oh, I'll just go to keybinds. I go to keybinds. I go through every goddamn keybind on my list. I cannot find a setting to enable switching between first and third person. It's not there. I went to advanced combat mechanics. I went to advanced movement mechanics. The keybind does not exist. Got it. So I'm convinced it's a fake keybind that if you at some point unbound J or bound it to something else, it removed it and you can never bind it again. Um, we've played that match out. I died to some guy. I'm like, this guy's walling. I watched the kill cam. That's in third person because he was in third person. I'm like, oh, right. that's right. It's third person. <laughs> and we backed out and we went we went back to regular BR. Never yeah. play it. It's terrible. Third person in BR is, is not good. It's not fun. It's not balanced, especially the way COD does it. The third person in this game is awful. I would not recommend trying this mode at all. Yeah. Terrible mode. <laughs> God, God it. damn, it's bad. That does not sound like you had a super fun experience. Yeah. No, it wasn't fun. That mode yeah. was not fun at all. I have not tried it, will not try it. Um, although I am a little surprised because in Warzone, or, well, yeah, in Warzone 2 slash MW2, Third person was actually supposedly done pretty well. So I'm kind of, I'm, I'm I think a bit it was surprised copium. to hear it's worse. It was copium back then because they did it early on with the launch of the game and everyone knew the game was so bad, but nobody wanted to like exactly say it. So when we got third person, everyone was like, oh my God, this so is the best lied. war zone has ever been. And then they all just lied. And then they took it out and they're like, they seriously took out the best mode we've ever had in war zone. And then everyone forgot about it. Yeah. So, so. It anyway, all a lie. it's an LTM, uh, so even if you love it, I wouldn't get too attached because it's not going to stick around. It's just, it just doesn't yeah. have the Bring popularity. Back preview. Nor should it. Yeah, it, exactly. Give me another experimental playlist where there's no SBMM. I'd like to experiment with that and get kills. Um, all right, and that's it. So, yeah, not much change with the video game this week. Um, I wouldn't expect much to change again until we get season three 
Hopefully armor plates start dropping before season three. That would be really cool. That would give Raven a unique opportunity to immediately break it again with another update. Uh, that would yeah. be fun. <laughs> so, yeah. Um, now, into news and upcoming changes. So, not too much to get into again here. However, the talk of the town is Warzone Mobile, which yeah, is now Warzone Mobile exists. live. Uh, yeah. As Tanner mentioned recently uh the re part of the reason that the last couple of weeks outside of it not being a new season or anything but it's been especially slow i would say uh changes to the video game in the last couple of weeks independently of there not having been like a season reloaded or new season it's still been slow for those circumstances and tanner made the point which i think is absolutely true is that that is because they have been all hands on deck for the launch of Warzone Mobile. Um, this is not a surprise, by the way, because Activision is a company that is publicly traded, and they like money. They like making money. And all of the money is in mobile games. That's where you make so much money. Uh, pretty sure mobile games make more money than real video games, by and large. Um, and of course, Activision has been getting into that and wanted to get into that further with the launch of COD Mobile. And then now, as, as of, I believe today, in fact, Warzone, Warzone, Mobile. um, Warzone yeah. Mobile. So this is the culprit for why the game has not been getting too many updates lately. Um, and it is, again, as I said at the beginning of this episode, incredibly surprising to me how many content creators for, like, the premium games are engaging with Warzone Mobile at all. I, I actually yeah. can't believe it. Um, I'm not surprised that Call of Duty's focus and attention has been on Warzone Mobile, obviously. That isn't surprising to me at all. But again, what is surprising to me is like J-God live streaming Warzone Mobile on the launch of it. Like, why are we pretending like this is going to be fun or have any longevity for people that mainly play on a console or PC? I don't know, I, I'm not sure. Maybe because the main game has been slow lately, they figure why not, I guess. But uh, Tanner and I watched some Warzone Mobile, in fact, during the pre-show. Uh, Thedropshot.com slash live, if you want to watch us live, we do a pre-show before recording. Uh, and we usually watch some gameplay. And yeah, we watched James God uh, streaming Warzone Mobile. So for some context, the way it works... And we'll have a couple more details, but you can play on Verdansk or Rebirth Island. You can play on a tablet or a cell phone. You can also use a controller. So your $3,000 scuff, you can use that to dunk on kids that are playing on a cell phone. Yeah. Um, However, you cannot play Warzone Mobile on console, obviously. And more surprisingly, it doesn't work on PC as well. Uh, and this is by design, which is interesting and noteworthy because COD Mobile, you were able to emulate on easily on uh, PC. I remember doing it for like an hour and then I got bored. Uh, duh. How did the game, am I missing any details? And what were your thoughts on, what were your first impressions watching J-God play Warzone Mobile? Yeah, it looked terrible. I mean, these people would not be giving it any, any, no one would be playing it. Basically, all of these big streamers would not be playing it had it not been on Verdansk and Rebirth Island. That is the only reason any of them are playing it because they want to experience the nostalgia again of playing both of those maps. Yeah, that's why they're doing it. if it if they launched Warzone mobile and it was some random new map or it was on Urzikstan, 
nobody would play it. So it was very smart they did it this way because they're getting a lot of attention for it's it. Probably true. Yeah. But I mean, yeah, the it will be very popular. All mobile games are extremely popular. COD Mobile was very, very popular. But the people, like the big streamers, the guys you watch that are trying it this week, they won't be playing it next week at all. Yeah. You know, a week or two from now, they'll all be done. I um, do. But yeah, I mean, it looks like, it looks good, but that's like kind of, I've been seeing like gameplay and stuff for a while now, so it's like, that's just what I expected. It does look good for a mobile game, but just not for me. I, I'm not. I'm not going to do it, man. Yeah, of course. Obviously for us, uh, for us and probably most of you, it's not for us. But I do maintain that there are probably a lot of people, uh, maybe some of you listening, who like travel for work or you just travel a lot anyway. I could absolutely see you packing your iPad in your controller and then in the hotel before bed instead of like, you know, getting an on-demand $500 Adam Sandler movie from the 90s in your hotel room, you instead play Warzone Mobile for an hour. I would uh, much rather watch that Adam Sandler movie. Too. I would as well. Those but are I think bangers that, in hotel rooms, man. They yeah. hit diffy. Yeah, they do. Um, that's, of course, true. But I could see a lot of people opting for Warzone Mobile. I probably wouldn't be one of them, but I think it's a, a neat idea. Uh, so... But outside yeah. of that, like, yeah, if you play on a console, usually you're not going to you're not going to like switch to the iPad game uh, that's or the iPhone game. Even that seems insane, but it is it is cool. I was surprised at how good it looked like graphically um, seeing it on the stream. It's like it, it looks like a PlayStation one or PlayStation two game and people are playing this on their cell phones. Which is yeah. crazy to me that the computing power is that good now. But Tanner also said that he heard it does not run well on anything but the newest gen cell phones and tablets. Yeah. Which makes me wonder how popular it actually will be. Because you're yeah, not tapping that's... into that like Indian mobile gaming market. Exactly. Because they're not they don't have the $1,200 iPhones, I would imagine, you know, like That's... mobile games are popular because they're so accessible. Like Candy Crush doesn't require and like a 3090 yeah. in your cell phone. So I wonder how popular That's... they will be. Yeah, I know. Yeah. That's the issue is it's a mobile game, but it's a mobile game only for people who have the best cell phones and devices. Right. Yeah. Mobile games have been designed for people to play on their phone and that's all they have and that's how it always has been so leave it up to call of duty activision publishing to release a a mobile game that is horribly optimized and most people can't play like that's what i was reading like all over all over twitter i know a lot of the uh leakers were saying things like that they're like oh yeah this is extremely laggy and plays terrible unless you have like the newest iphone whatever it is like the iphone 15 and then or like the newest android so yeah um, that's kind of another thing too, is like, and I think maybe the graphics just automatically scale based on your hardware. I don't even know if there are settings for any of that. Yeah. I wonder. So I think that's the other thing too. Cause, cause I know people were saying like, Oh, like how, what device or cell phone is going to have like the best graphics for the game. So, cause I don't <laughs> think you can change anything mm -hmm. actually. Yeah. Here's how to get the best graphic settings for Warzone mobile. Go and buy the newest iPad. That's $2,500. Yeah. Yeah, you might, yeah, buy a buy two PS5s at that point. Uh, um the uh I do remember I haven't heard about it lately, but I remember like 5 years ago seeing a bunch of advertisements for like mobile game focused cell phones. They were like built and advertised as like the gaming cell phone. Do companies still do that? I wonder if there is one know. that's like this generation, if so, and how well it would run Warzone Mobile. But yeah, like you're not yeah. tapping into the big cell phone market or like mobile game market if you're not, if your game can't run on any phone but the, the newest ones and the most expensive ones. But because also those people, like the people that have the newest iPhone are also the people that are most likely to 
play Call of Duty on a console or PC already because they obviously have money. Yeah. To not be mobile gaming, you know? So I, I'm curious how it's going to go from a business perspective for them. Um, That's another thing that was like, maybe in the markets where everyone is just a mobile gamer, like India, like you said, maybe they're just so used to games playing horrible that they literally don't know any better since most of them aren't going to own like, you know, 30 nineties or 40. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's they true. just think yeah. that's normal maybe. So if you're used to something that bad, maybe it's okay for them. I don't really know, but yeah, I guess it depends how bad it is on like older. Phones. But that's, that's what was funny is going from watching J God stream, right. To watching Neo's stream, how much smoother it is like watching regular Warzone. Obviously it's like, a just a huge difference, but L yeah. mobile gaming. Yeah. Yeah. But, I will um, say though, watching J God, at least on the new cell phones, like he undoubtedly has, it did run pretty well. Hit Reg was pretty awful, uh, but that's that's not so much a hardware issue as a server issue, I think. Um But like, you know, the game he didn't crash when I watched him for twenty minutes. Uh, oh, we watched him for six minutes, yeah. The mechanics seem to work. Months, like you reload, you switch weapons. It works like it worked. You know, I don't know. The game launches. Yeah, it ran. True. It ran. Yeah, somewhat. So anyway. Yeah, yeah. but uh, anyway, so their IGN did an interview with the co-head of mobile gaming at Activision. Nothing super interesting here, but just talk about a couple little things. Um, so this is what the mobile gaming co-head said. Uh, he said, Battle Royale really took off on mobile. It is a massive, massive market on mobile now, but it's just a prototype. If you drop into Battle Royale games on mobile, you're basically dropping in with a hundred bots or a lot of bots, mostly bots. That's true. That's generally how they are. It is just not the real thing at all. And so when we got on the Call of Duty tech uh, and that was working, and now we have access to Demonware backend and all this kind of optimization has happened over the 20 years of COD secret sauce. Okay. All of a sudden, we can get 120 humans in the same match. Oh, so that's kind of what they're, uh, they're what like they're talking point. about. Is that it's pretty much human. So they didn't. Maybe they said in the article somewhere. I just skimmed through it about if there are bots at all. I, I would imagine they do have bots, maybe to fill, um, or not. But I don't. I don't know if they ever confirm that if there are bots at all. Um, and then just the only other interesting here. Interviewer asks, Warzone Mobile supports 120 players, but Warzone on PC and console is currently <laughs> limited to 100. How do you reconcile uh, that mobile uh, is able to have more players on console and PC? So then he goes on to say, I think it's important to point out that this isn't the technical limitation in any direction. These are design choices. So the Call of Duty technology supports lots of players. I don't know. It didn't support 120 in... Uh, in uh al Mazra last year and the servers would crash yeah constantly. it certainly didn't seem to so it doesn't seem like your tech's very good but anyway uh we can support more players or less players in warzone mobile and the same is true on other platforms the reason you see certain player configurations is purely through dis uh, design decisions that are made based on checking out how people are playing where the pockets of action are, where certain things happen in the journey of playing the map and when it gets exciting or boring or whatever and player count really impacts that okay well can they not tell how boring br is right now yeah, at times exactly i mean we'll land cargo uncontested buy a loadout fly to old town don't see anybody fly from old town to low town and see one team how do you go from three major pois dead center in the middle of the map in quads with 100 players and not find another team that happens all the time and even yeah. if you do see people it'll be one team two teams maybe that's it it is way too slow constantly. There are no pockets of action anywhere until the last 10 minutes of the match. So you're lying and you're wrong. But anyways, uh, it's important to point out, it's really important to point out that we're on a different map in Verdansk than the console PC games are today. Uh, and so the feel is different, the flow is different, and the pacing is different. Over time, you may see any of the platforms, including mobile, changing and dialing up or down the player counts, not because of technical reasons, but for gameplay and pacing and design decisions. By the way, isn't Verdansk smaller than Urzikstan? 
So, like, does that even make I sense? I don't remember if Verdansk is smaller than Urzik Stan. It's a design decision to have more players on the smaller map. Got it. If true. I don't know. It's Urzik Stan is smaller than Almazra by, like, yes. 30% or something, they say, they claim. Yes. Uh, but I don't know if they ever compared it to Verdansk or if anybody did. I'm not sure. Yeah. Regardless, that's hilarious that there are actually more players on mobile than PC. It is hilarious. Yeah. I I kind of believe them, honestly. Because if they... Well, eh, do I? Sort of. I don't know. It, I, don't I mean, know. they're either just lying or they're incompetent. It's one of the two. Because they obviously don't know how boring the game is sometimes. Yeah, or they're just lying and, and saying they can add more players when I feel like they can't. Yeah, so, exactly. Know. Yeah. 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 Another thing, by the way, in this article, uh, they talk about the fact that there is cross progression. Yeah. Um, but not cross play. Some other BRs that are on PC, console, and mobile do have cross play across all platforms. Why did you decide against it for this? I'm not even going to read the answer because how dumb of an idea that is. Why would you ask that? Um, of course, there shouldn't be cross play. <laughs> <laughs> that would be yeah. insane. Uh, it would make our lobbies more fun, but uh, it would just ruin the mobile game. Um, but there is cross progression as well. We all we had already talked about that, but that is like another reason you might want to actually play on mobile when again you're in that hotel room or whatever. Yeah, if you want to grind some camos or like level a new weapon, like let's say a new season drops and there's a new gut new AR out and you just unlocked it but now you have to go to a conference for three days. You can grind weapon levels during the conference at night, and then when you get home, you'll have your gun max level. That's actually pretty neat. I think that's cool. Um, yeah. So, regardless, it is out. Yeah. And it's and it's here. It is and there. And it's Warzone yeah. Mobile. And to be clear, no one will be talking about this in a week. There's going to yeah. be almost nothing uh in in terms of the content creators you guys watch or whatever they'll yeah. be back to playing the real video game of course so yeah. yeah um so then moving on we have uh some kind of some player count updates um from different platforms this came from charlie intel so uh info here so the first chart I have here is February 2024, the top 10 games played on PlayStation 5, ranked by monthly active users. So Call of Duty HQ, which is MW3 Warzone, was the number two most played game on PlayStation 5 in February. So again, you know, everyone always says the classic COD is dead, blah, blah. Uh, COD was number two. And for what it's worth, everyone who says Apex is not dead, it was number nine on PlayStation 5. So the only game that had more players in February on PlayStation was Fortnite last month. Uh, and then going on to Xbox, same exact thing. Fortnite number one, Call of Duty was the number two most played game. Apex number 10. Um, and yeah, see, COD stays up there too. That's the thing. So like the month prior, they were also number two. Uh, yeah. Fortnite was also number one. Uh, yeah. Apex actually went up a little bit. They went from lower slots to a little bit higher, so... Still a lot of people playing them. And then the last one here is uh, 2024 year to date top 20 games from Nintendo, PlayStation, Steam, and Xbox platforms. Ranked on uh, Call dollar of Duty. sales. Yeah, ranked on dollar sales. So COD was number two, the number two most best selling game of this year so far. And that's, you know, two months after the game comes out when people usually actually buy it, it's still the number two most purchased number one was hell divers by dollars that is uh, which crazy. i don't know how much hell divers was i don't i think hell divers 40. is only 49.99 yeah isn't it? yeah Something like that yeah so and yeah. it made more dollars still even though it's 20 dollars less so it sold yeah. quite a bit more copies than mw3 yep. did now to well, be fair if warzone charged players it would be number one easily of course of all the cheaters buying new accounts <laughs> yeah exactly um yeah, that's the thing. And this is also starting on December 30th of 23. 
by then many 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 people had already bought mdev3 so exactly it's yeah. not like hell divers is more popular but yeah hell divers was 39 yep yeah cod is yeah. not dead um it's we talked about this on patreon it's you know uh compared to like november cod might feel a little dead for sure because it's lost a lot of players since then but Objectively speaking, COD is not dead. It's still incredibly popular and people do be playing it. So Yeah. And Steam is the smallest platform. So don't forget when you see the low Steam player accounts, it does mean a little bit. It means players are dropping off in general, but Steam is like, I mean, gotta be for sure less than five percent of the player base is on Steam. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. So uh, that's it, boys and girls. Not too much going that's on this it, week. That's it, they're saying, huh? As we said, yes, indeed. Uh, just a, a reminder again, on Saturday, we will be doing our tier list part two. We'll be finishing up by ranking all the POIs in Urzikstan and Almazra. Take a little trip down memory lane and get contemporary when we get to Urzikstan. Yeah. I think that's going to be a lot of fun. I think there's going to be a lot of disagreement there was some discord in our fire group chat. In fact, uh, cope was very upset at us for not ranking Superstore S tier, even though it's a he decent POI, something. maybe yeah. once only in two minutes, because after everyone drops, it becomes a terrible POI and I should move it down from a tier for that reason. Um, so we're probably, I don't know why we even of, put it in a, yeah, it should have been like B or C. It's, it's a honestly POI. B I think. Don't yeah. Um, Regardless, we will have more disagreements, I'm sure, born out of our next episode on Saturday, so be here for that. We are starting an hour later than normal. If you wanted to watch live or listen to the early access, it'll be coming a little later than you're used to. And, again, on Patreon, by then, we will likely have released our controller episode. Wow. Controller versus keyboard and mouse, the definitive guide and it's going oh, to be wow, fun and exciting guide. for yeah. patrons only. If you want the definitive guide on what input to use, wow. patreon.com slash the drop shot, join at any tier and you'll have access to that episode when it goes live this weekend. Stay humble. Stay humble.